Let's take our Bibles once again, go back to Genesis chapter 19. And what I'll also ask you to do is please take your, keep your finger there and go to Judges chapter 19 as well. We're going to have to look at these two stories side by side, Genesis chapter 19 and Judges chapter 19. So I'll give you a minute to turn to those two passages. Genesis 19 and Judges 19. And uh, for our first time visitor, it is common for us to go through uh, the, the book. Of, we're currently going through the book of Genesis. We're going chapter by chapter. And like, like a lot of things in the Bible, there are a lot of things that are pleasant. There are a lot of things that are beautiful. There are a lot of chapters that will edify the, the soul and, and comfort you when you're down. But as it is true with our Lord God, as it is true with the Bible, there are certain chapters that are challenging. There are certain chapters that show us the judgment of God. There are certain chapters that show us the hatred of God. We see the love of God, we also see the hatred of God. We see the long-suffering of God in some passages. We see the wrath of God in other passages. And this is important for us to understand because most churches today only focus on the butterflies, right? They only notice, uh, focus on the things that are sweet and wonderful. And that's important. We need to preach on those things, but we need to have a well-rounded perspective of who our God is, a well-rounded perspective of what this book talks about, you know, and we're talking about a chapter here that's very relevant to the day that we live in today, in 2019. This chapter needs to be preached in every church, okay, and this shows us the judgment on the sodomites, the judgment on the homosexuals, okay, the homosexual agenda that we're dealing with in this day and age, the demands they want to be recognized as, you know, married couples if they want to get married. They want to be, they want to be able to adopt children. You know, the homosexuals, they cannot produce their own children, but they want to have the freedoms and the liberties to adopt their own children. Hey, we're heading down a bad path when we start accepting this wicked behavior in our nation. But this isn't new. This isn't something that's just happened in 2019. This has happened throughout history. All right. There, there are times when, when people know what the Word of God says and they start accepting these wicked, this wicked behavior. They start accepting this wicked sin of homosexuality. The LGBT community, it starts to be accepted at different points in history and it destroys nations, it destroys cities. And in this chapter we see that God himself just steps in. He's had enough and he destroys two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, for the wicked sin. All right. And then things have to start all over again. People realize, wow, look at God's judgment. Look at the wickedness. Look how bad this is. And they revert back to the Lord. But then time goes on. Generations develop. And again, it starts to become accepted once again. We're just going through another cycle today. That's it. We're just going through another cycle of this. And in fact, Jesus Christ does speak that as it was in the days of Lot. So what we saw here in chapter 19 as it will be as well in the latter times, in the last days, we're going to start seeing the same thing develop again. But look at Genesis chapter 19, verse 4. Genesis 19, verse 4. It says, But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom. The title for the sermon this morning is The Men of Sodom. The Men of Sodom. Let's start off, off with verse number 1. Genesis 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. If you just remember from the previous chapter, these two angels had fellowshiped, had communed with Abraham and the Lord Jesus Christ. And now these two angels have gone their way to Sodom to, to testify if the works of Sodom was, was as evil as they thought. I think even these angels are going to be surprised by how evil it is when they enter the city. And it says here that two angels came to Sodom and even, and Lot, remember Lot, the nephew of, of, um, of Abraham, sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Remember, they went there. They, 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 the, the angels are desiring to be in the streets to just see how wicked this place is. Now, Lot, he's got, a good, he's got good behavior. I'm sure he's learned this from his uncle Abraham. Hey, we've got some visitors. A Lot, I'm sure, recognizes these are very special people. See later on, he recognizes these are angels. These are sent by God, and he wants to house them all night. He doesn't explain to them exactly why. Okay, he knows why. 
He knows, man, if they hang around these streets all night, these angels are going to be taken by the men of Sodom and be abused and sodomized. Okay? And so he says, look, just, just stay with me. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take you in. I'll look after you in my house all night. And then in the morning, go quickly. You, know? you can rise up early and go and go about your business. Lot knows how wicked his house is or how wicked his city is. Now, look, it's easy to point fingers, all right? But what if you had two angels? What if you had Jesus Christ turn up to your doorstep right now, you know, in your house, you know, and, you know, you know there are certain things in your house that the Lord's not going to be happy with, all right? I mean, well, how, how are you going to react to that, you know? You want to take these guys in, but you might say, well, man, we can't show him the DVD cabinet. You know, we, we can't show the Lord Jesus Christ the, the Netflix subscription, you know, we can't, we can't allow Jesus to, or the angels to go into to Google in case they look at the, the Google history on our internet, okay? And this is the kind of thing that's going on here. Lot's afraid that these angels are going to see the wickedness of his city, all right? And okay, yeah, easy to point fingers at Lot and to Sodom, but always take the lessons we see here and we need to apply them to ourselves, right? We want to grow, we want to mature, we want to take the lessons for ourselves in the Bible, and it says here, verse number three, and he pressed, that being Lot pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake, bre uh, did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the title of the sermon, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Listen, these, the men of the city saw these two angels come in, okay? Uh, and what do they do? They can pass the house of, of Lot. They want, to, they want to be wicked to these two angels, all right? It says, uh, men both old and young. It said all, right? All of the city, all the people from every quarter. How corrupt was Sodom at, at the, in these days, right? It wasn't just 2% of the population as it is today in Australia. It was all the people in the city that wanted to abuse, you know, these angels, you know, and, and, and uh, do their wickedness to these angels. You'll see, soon see this as we read through. Verse number five. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men? Hey, who's calling for the men? The men of the city, right? The men of the city. Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them unto us that we may know them. Say, what's that? They want to know them. Hey, maybe they want to have a welcome party for these two guests that have come into this city. No, the Bible uses the word know uh, when it's talking about a physical sexual relationship. Okay, just a, a quick example. I'll just, you don't need to turn there, just Genesis 4 1. The Bible says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. But the Bible says here that Adam knew Eve his wife. That's how the Lord speaks when it comes to that physical relationship. And so when the man, the man of Sodom said, Hey, bring out those men that came into your house that we may know them. They're talking about a wicked sin, right? They're talking about taking those men and committing homosexual acts with those men. That's how wicked this place has gotten. If you're someone new, you come into the city, you're going to be taken advantage of, you're going to be raped, you're going to be sodomized. This is the sin of homosexuality, all right? This is a wicked sin. Now, what I want you to do, well, actually, let's keep reading verse number six. And Lot went, and look at this. And Lot went out, sorry, went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. What does he call the men of Sodom? He calls them brethren. Hey, Lot, man, what a mess up. This is a man of God. This is someone that's saved. He's calling the Sodomites his brethren, right? But then he says, look, do not so wickedly. And he says, I pray you. He says, I beg you, please, no, not these men. Okay, I beg you, do not do these wicked acts of homosexuality toward these men. He begs them. All right. Now, please go to take, keep your finger there. Go to Judges 19, verse 1. We, we, we almost can't go to Genesis. I mean, you can't almost not ignore Gen, uh, Judges 19 because we have a very similar story that takes place. In fact, the wording is so similar. These two stories are definitely connected. 
And in Judges 19 verse 1, just, just a reminder, what did Lot say to the, to the men of Sodom? He said, um, do not sow, uh, uh, I, I pray you brethren, do not sow wickedly, right? That's what Lot was begging these men of Sodom. We go to Judges 19 verse 1. This is several uh, years later, you know, several hundreds of years later, we have this story in the book of Judges, all right? And it says here in verse number 1, And it came to pass in, in those days, when there was no king in Israel, that there were a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Okay, so this man uh, takes this, I guess, you know, living girlfriend, if you want to call them that, you know, someone uh, al almost as a wife, of this woman. Now, we'll just drop down to verse number nine. We're going to be focusing this story on this Levite and this woman that he's taken as a concubine. Verse number nine. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father in law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day drove toward evening. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day grove to an end. Lodge here that thine heart may be merry, and tomorrow get you early on your way, that thou mayest go home. Very similar words to what Lot had said to the angels. Let's drop down to verse number 15. So this man and his concubine are, are, are on their way. They're on a journey. Look at verse number 15. And they turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, and there was no man that took them, into his house to lodge in. So these guys are just, this, this man and his concubine, they're, they're at this city, they're just sitting on the streets, they can't find anybody to take them in for the night. Verse number 16, And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also at, uh, of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. So where they are is, is at the, tri the tribe of, of Benjamin. They're amongst these Israelites there. Okay, let's drop down to verse number 20. So this old man sees this couple basically on the street, okay? Verse number 20. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. He says, look, I'll take you in. Just don't stay here in the street. Okay, he's warning them. Verse 21. So he brought him into his house and gave uh, provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, so as he was you know, entertaining this couple, behold, the men of the city, again, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, okay, or, or Belial. Now Belial or Belial is another name given to Satan, okay, given to the devil. And the Bible talks about these men of the city as men of Belial, men of Satan, okay? Now, as we keep reading, you'll soon see that these men of Satan, these children of Satan, children of the devil, are homosexuals as well. Let me just say this very quickly to you guys. Every homosexual in this nation and in this world is a child of the devil. I make no apologies saying that. That's exactly what the Bible calls these men, all right? That's the truth of the Word of God. Did I, did I just write that in? Did I just come in this morning, guys? Did I just write that in? No, that's exactly what the Word of God says. The words of God says this about them. Verse number... Where am I up to, guys? Verse number... 20, oh, I didn't finish 22, right? Certain sons of Belial, beset the house roundabout. What are they doing? And beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Look, bring forth the man! Not the concubine, not the woman. Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. The same words that the men of Sodom said to the two angels. We've seen the same group of people again. Several centuries later, it's happened again. History has been rewritten. 2019 is not anything new. It's coming our way when people are going to start banging on the doors and asking to sodomize other men. It's going to happen. All right? We need to be prepared for this. This is the warning that we get from the Word of God. Verse number 23. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren. He calls them brethren as well. Nay, I pray you, I beg you, do not so wickedly. Sodomy, homosexuality, you know, this is a wicked sin. Even these men that live in these cities know how wicked it is. They put up with it, but they recognize how wicked it is. 
Listen, when our nation uh, accepted homosexual marriage, people were often saying, well, it's not affecting me, you know, let them do whatever they want in their own house, okay? But when you ask those people, but you do realize it's pretty wicked what they're doing, right? You realize it's pretty disgusting, it's pretty filthy. They'll say, yeah, I know that. Just like these men, we, they know, our nation knows how wicked this is. They know how disease-ridden written these actions are. This is where AIDS comes from, guys. This was well known in the 1980s. I remember watching television with my parents, the media, the news, all right? And the AIDS epidemic that was going on in the 80s, and they would narrow it down. This is coming from the homosexual community, okay? Because it's wicked, it's filthy, all right? It's wrong. It's contrary to nature. It's contrary to the Word of God. Verse number, uh, to, not, not do so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to my house, do not this folly. Verse 24. Behold, now look what the man says. Now, this man, yes, he realized how wicked it is, but his, his, his mind's messed up. Look what he does. Look what he, look what he offers. Instead of you committing homosexual acts, he offers this in verse 24. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them will I bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do not so vile a thing. Okay? So look, this man is willing to offer his only daughter, his daughter, you know, a maiden, a virgin, all right? And this other man's concubine, he would rather, listen to me, he's, he's basically saying, look, take them, rape them, do whatever you want to them, just don't commit sodomy. Just don't commit the acts of homosexuality. Now look, I'm not saying what this man is offering is correct. I mean, he's messed up as well. He's been living in this town for so long. But here's the, th here's the crazy thing. How wicked is rape? How wicked is it? How, how wicked is it to, to have a group of men take a, a couple of women and just abuse them all night? Extremely wicked. But he would, this man would rather have this sin in his house rather than the sin of homosexuality in his house. All right? And listen to me. According to the Bible, the, a rapist is meant to be put to death. Okay? And that's not even as, as bad of a sin in his eyes as homosexuality. Listen, we're going to soon see that even the sin of homosexuality is the death penalty in accordance to God's word. And it used to be in accordance to our government, in, in our laws, in our nation. It used to be as well. Okay? It used to be a criminal offense till the 70s or 80s. I can't remember exactly when. I haven't looked it up for a while. Okay? But our states would slowly change the laws of our nation. Our nation was once in line with the Bible. Believe it or not, okay? Probably my kids are like, I can't believe it. Yes, it was once in line with the word of God. Verse number 25. Verse number 25. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the, drawing, the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. And he said unto her, Up and let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon an ass, and the man rose up and got him unto his place. These men of the city had abused this woman all night till she basically died. Okay? She was so weary from what her experience was. This is an awful story that we read in the Bible, but we need to be aware. Okay? We, need to be, we can't be ignorant of the wickedness of this world and the wickedness that our nation is heading toward. We're going to start seeing these things if, look, it's probably even happening already behind the, you know, behind the scenes. But one day it's going to be open in the city, accepted within cities. Okay? We need to warn our children. Our children are going to grow up in a much harsher environment than what we did. All right? So that's the story there. You can see the similarities. As, and let's go back to Genesis 19 now. Genesis 19. And the reason I, I wanted to look at Judges 19 is because it's so similar. And, and the book of Genesis was already written. By the, time of the, by the time of the judges there, all right? So they should know about the story. And yet they're making the same mistakes all over again. But Genesis chapter 19, verse 9. <clears throat> this is what Lot says. Look what Lot says. Behold now, this is what Lot says to the men of Sodom. 
Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, as do ye to them, as it is, sorry, as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. The same offer the old man made, so makes a Christian man. All right? It'd be better for you to just rape my daughters than to commit homosexuality. Does that just show you how wicked that sin is? According to the Bible. According to men that aren't even that faithful. Men that, that, that are messed up, they're living in wicked sin. They should have been out of there long ago. Even they recognize how wicked the sin is. It's worse than rape in their eyes. All right? This is why rapists and homosexuals, according to the Bible, should be sentenced to death. Not by the church, but by the government, by our law, as it used to be. All right? Verse number 9. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Saying, look, you're withholding us, those two men. We're going to do worse to you than what we were planning to do to them. I mean, look, Lot was meant to be living in the city. He, he calls them brethren. He knows these people, all right? And this is the truth. Look, I hear about people, well, I've got a homosexual friend. He's so nice to me. He's so good. He's so friendly. Listen, if you turn against them at some point, they will want to do worse to you than what they're doing to other people. These are not people to make friends with. This is why God destroys them in this chapter. Okay? They're going to destroy you. They're going to destroy your city. Verse number 9. Sorry. Verse number 10. Uh, verse number 9. And, uh, end of verse number 9. And they pressed sore upon the man even lot and came near to break the door. Okay? They were trying to break down the door. Verse number 10. But the men, these are the angels, put forth their hand and put lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were sorry, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And this is interesting. The angels perform a miracle. They, they blind the men that are trying to break down the door. It says they're small and great. Even young children, young teenagers are trying to sodomize these angels. And they're struck with blindness. And look, it's not like they're blind. Now they're trying to sort out, well, I'm blind. I need to work out how to, how to, how to get my sight back. It says now they're wearing themselves to, to, to find the door. They're still trying to find the door, even as blind people. I mean, if you go blind, wouldn't you rush to the hospital? <laughs> right? These guys are still trying to find the door, still trying to have their way with these angels. Man, now you understand why God had to destroy these cities, don't you? Okay? Now you understand why, why God is so harsh toward this sin. The sodomites, the homosexuals, all right? The, the LGBT AIDS, AIDS, whatever you want to call them these days, all right? It's a wicked sin. This is the, the Bible's the truth. This is the truth, right? The media's going to paint them another way, okay? Our government's going to paint them another way. Your friends, your schools are going to paint them another way. This is the truth of the Word of God, all right? If you don't like this preaching, at least. You know, don't shoot the messenger. Take it to God. God, I, just, I, I don't know, is this right? Ask God to open your eyes and to show you the truth of this wicked sin in accordance to his book, in accordance to his Bible, all right? Now you say, why are they this way? I'm glad you asked, okay? Take your Bibles, go to Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Romans chapter 1, in the New Testament, out of all places, in the New Testament, it explains to us how they get to such a wicked state. Why is it that they desire an unnatural act? Okay? Most men would vomit, would spew, would be so disgusted just thinking about being with another man. As to women. Okay? The, the normal woman, you don't even have to be a Christian. The normal natural woman would be disgusted, would rather throw up than think about being with another woman. All right? Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Hey, we're going to see the wrath of God revealed in he from heaven shortly. 
uh, as we continue uh, Genesis 19. But you see, God has revealed his wrath in a certain way. There are certain people that walk this earth today and you can say, hey, God has already poured out his wrath on these people. They're already done for. God's wrath has already fallen upon them before they're even cast into hellfire. He says here, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Hey, they have the truth, okay, but they hold it in unrighteousness. Okay, they don't believe it's righteous. Verse 19, because they which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. See, God has made an effort to show these people who he is. All right, it's not like God just hates them to begin with. No, he's shown them. He's loved them. Jesus died for their sins before they got to this state. All right? God has shown them. Verse number 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God has shown them creation, the beauty of creation, so they can know there is a creator. Okay? Verse number 21. Because that when they knew God, hey, They didn't start as atheists. They didn't start as haters of God. They said, yeah, there must be a God. They understood that. They knew God. But look, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Listen, you can only go so long in life by rejecting God, rejecting the gospel. One day, God might darken your heart, okay? He's had enough of it. At some point, some spiritual line is crossed with God and he will darken the heart of these people. Verse number 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Do you guys know people that say, hey, you know, we're all God. You know, the dog over there is a God. The tree is God. The earth is God. Hey, that's kind of that's the direction these guys are headed. You know, instead of seeing him as an uncorruptible God, they see him as the creation which is corrupted. There's actually a curse upon. I mean, the the, the creation is beautiful even with the curse. All right, but there's like there's actually a curse on this earth. And so when they when they say we're all God and, and this earth is God, they're basically saying, hey, God is corruptible. All right, let's keep going. Verse number twenty-four. Now this is what you need to focus on. Wherefore. So as a result of all this, because they reject God, wherefore God also, in the same way also, gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Listen, God gives them up. Okay? He's he's put up with it. It's enough. He's given up on them now. All right? They rejected him, and likewise, in the same way, God is has put is over him. He's, he's put up with him, right? He says he gave them up. Okay, what did he give him up to? Just do whatever you want from the lust of their own hearts. Okay, and what is the lust they want? They want to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly what that is at this point in time, but it will tell us very shortly what that is. Look at verse number twenty-five: Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature? more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26 repeats the same thing we saw in verse 24, how God has given them up. Verse number 26, For this cause, for this reason, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men. How did the, natu- how did the women do this? Likewise, also the man, he's going to explain it right now, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was meat. You see what's happened? What lust have they, have they been given into? The lust of homosexuality. Men after men, women after women. All right? But did they, how did they, were they born this way? No, no, no. They knew God. God tried to reveal himself to them. They should know better. They're without excuse. But they hated God. They didn't want anything to do with God. They gave up on God, so God gives up on them. All right? That's what happens. That's what the Bible says. Right? That's what the Bible says. Verse number 20, 28. 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate means rejected. To do those things which are not convenient. God has given up on them. Okay? They have a reprobate mind. They've been rejected by God. Right? Verse number 29. Now, these group of people, verse 29 says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder. What do we read in Genesis 19? They murdered the woman by their actions. Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. This is what makes up their character. Okay, This is what they're filled with, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. This is why they go for the men for men. This is why people go and, and want to sleep with animals or machines or whatever other stupid things are going on these days. All right? Covenant breakers without natural affection. Implacable. What does that mean? They cannot be placated. You cannot appease these people. You know, if, if, you, if you, listen, if you're dealing with a homosexual, no is the answer every time. Every time. They're implacable. You give in a little bit, they're not going to be satisfied. These men try to placate these homosexuals with these virgin women, right? And they weren't placated. They wanted the men. Okay? Implacable. Unmerciful. Showing no mercy. Listen, you, you're not going to... You're not going to find grace in their sights. Okay? Verse number 32. Who know in the judgment of God that they which... Listen, they know the judgment of God. They know they're destroyed. All right? They, they know they're done for. This is why when you talk to these people, they know they've got no chance. They'll say these things openly. It's too late for me. Who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay? They're worthy of death, the death penalty. Okay? That's the death. This is the New Testament. Say, so, oh, not the New Testament. Yes, the New Testament. Okay? Tells us that these homosexuals, these people that are rejected by God, are worthy of death, are worthy to be put to death by our government. Okay? As it used to be. Go back to Genesis 19, please, verse 12. Genesis 19, verse 12. And look, this is why this needs to be preached, okay? People do not want to accept clear Bible teaching, okay? This is why people, they don't want to go to a Bible preaching church, okay? People want to find a church where they can just be, um, you know, just have a social gathering, just, just make friends. They don't want to know what the Word of God says. The Word of God is clear, and it needs to be preached clearly, all right? Welcome to a Baptist church, all right? This is what a Baptist church should be. We're preaching the truth of God's word. Okay, verse number 12, Genesis 19, verse 12. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou, this is the angels, Hast thou any, uh, sorry, Hast thou here any besides, Son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters, And whatsoever thou hast in the city, Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. It's settled, man. They're going to destroy the place, Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Who has sent these angels to destroy it? The Lord. Okay, we saw the Lord in the previous chapter. Who was he? It was the Lord Jesus Christ that had sent the angels to destroy these homosexuals. Verse number 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-laws, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. Parents, just a quick lesson there. Make sure you have a say in who your daughters marry. These sons-in-law was not hearkening to the word of God, to the destruction that was coming. And his daughters, Lot's daughters, were done for, the ones that had married these men. Verse number 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. They're basically pulling him out of the city. Lot, get out of here. Take your family. Take who you can. Verse number 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad and he said, Escape for thy life. 
Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Then he said, look, get out of here. We're going to destroy this wicked full of homosexuals. Don't even look back. Don't feel sorry about what's going on. Okay? Don't have any, any, any kind of regrets. Just, just go. These guys are, are done for. They need to be destroyed. You go on and, start, and try to make something out of your life now, Lot. Get out of here. All right? Verse 18, And Lot said unto them, if that's what I'm up to, sorry guys, Oh, not so, my Lord. Verse 19, Behold now thy servant have found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with Lot. <laughs> if, the, if God is telling him, go into the mountains, then God's going to look after him there. But he's like, oh man, I'm going to die if I go there. You know? And he you soon say, oh, take me, let me go to a city. All right. I mean, man, didn't you just learn how wicked these cities can become? Anyway, um, 20, verse 20. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. It is, not, is it not a little one that my soul shall live? And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Hasty, or look, we're not going to destroy that little city because you want to go there. All right, you can, you can go there. Verse number 22, Hasty, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was rin, risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Very quickly there, guys. God doesn't even wait to send them to hell. God doesn't wait to send them to hell. He sends hell to them. He rains fire and brimstone upon these cities. I mean, think about it, all right? I mean, these huge, you know, chunks of rock just coming down and destroying everything that you own, hitting people, people running, you know, in flames. It's not just their souls that are going to be in hell. It's not that just their souls that are being tormented. Their bodies are on fire. Their bodies are being crushed and destroyed. The wrath of God has come upon these cities. That's how wicked this sin is. Children, please, I, I beg you, understand how wicked the sin of Sodom is. Please be careful of the friends you make. Be careful of the internet, okay? Be careful of the influencers that are, besides, look, there are the influencers in this world want to turn you to sympathize with the homosexuals. They want you to be, they don't mind you being saved, you're saved already if you're saved, right? They want you to be like a lot. You can just live in the city and put up with it. Lot thought he could manage the situation, no. They wanted to do worse to Lot than what they wanted to do to those angels. And look, the sad, this, this saddens me the most, that Lot's wife looks back, you know, and in judgment, because she felt sorry, God, how can you destroy the city? Because she had that, you know, God judges her and she turns, she dies. She turns into a pillar of salt, okay? I mean, God does not want us to have any sympathy for the destruction of these homosexuals, all right? Now you might say, but that's the Old Testament God, right? Now we have Jesus in the New Testament, right? The one who, who came and, and sacrificed himself for us, and he did. The one who loves us so much, who, 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 who had compassion on people, a man of sorrows, you know, someone who, who, who uh, you know, wanted to, to, to show his, his, his saving power to the masses, you know, who, who loved the lost, who loved sinners, that's how Jesus, that's our God today in the New Testament, right? It's, yeah, it, he is. He is our God, but he's the same God, the same God that was with Abraham who sent the angels, okay, who was instructed, who instructed the angels to destroy the cities. It's the same Jesus, all right? The same Jesus in the New Testament is the same Jesus of the Old Testament, the same Lord God that we worship, all right? And we saw in Romans, you know, Again, clarifying the fact that these people are to be put to death. And Jesus said in, in Luke 17, verse 32, the memory verse you all learnt, remember Lot's wife. The words of Jesus as he was walking this earth 
2,000 years ago, as the Lamb of God, he still warned the people there to remember Lot's wife. Don't feel sorry for these homosexuals. Let them be judged by God. They deserve the judgment of God. They deserve to be destroyed. Remember Lot's wife. Jesus remembered. We need to remember. All right? Now, please go to Revelation chapter 20, please. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. I keep saying, but, you know, there's a lot in the book of Revelation that is parallel or closes off what we saw in the book of Genesis. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. Now, in the future, Jesus Christ is coming back. He's going to rule and reign for a thousand years, right? Verse number 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. At the end of Christ's millennial reign, Satan's going to come back, create an army somehow of Sodomites, for sure, okay, people that somehow, you know, uh, was able to live during this time, all right, wicked people that hate the Lord God, is going to be able to get an army to go and fight against the Lord Jesus Christ. This is now New Testament times, all right? How does Jesus respond? Oh, please, no. You know, I'm going to give you another chance. No, what happens? Verse number nine. And, when, uh, and they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Hey, what rained on Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone from the lake of fire, right? Where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is the reality of people that are cast into hell. And again, we see Jesus Christ in New Testament times as he rules and reign, you know, with that rod of iron, again, fire comes down from heaven and destroys the wicked. Okay, this, again, all right? Consistent, beginning of the Bible, the end of the Bible, it's the same God. Jesus Christ is the same, all right? Back to Genesis 19, verse 27. Genesis 19, verse 27. And look, do you think I want to come to church and preach on sodomites? Do you think, I, oh man, I can't wait to preach on homeless? Look, I, I, I don't want to think about it. It's so wicked, all right? I'm glad we don't have chapters you know, that, that uh, you know, entire, ch- you know, full, full books about this topic. I'm glad we touch upon it once in a while, all right? But when it comes up, it's time to preach about it, okay? It's time to preach about it. Verse number 27, And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and be- beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as a smoke of a furnace. So Abraham just can from a far distance see the smoke, the destruction of the fires of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in the which Lot, Lot dwelt. And Lot went up to Zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for, they, for he feared to dwell in Zoar. I mean, this guy's afraid of everything. And he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. So these guys become kind of recluse in a clay, cave into the mountains. You know, uh, Lot is full of fear. I mean, I can probably understand. You see fire. I mean, God just destroys your entire home, destroys all the people you once knew. He just, you know, his wife has turned into a pillar of salt. You know, he's, he's now got a fear of God. Finally, he's got a fear of God to some extent, right? I mean, he's, he's found out the hard way. Wow, this God is terrible. He's a scary God when you're on the wrong side of him, yeah. all right? It's true. I mean, that's just how it is. This is, the, this is who the God of the Bible is, the God who loves us so much. You can understand how hard it would have been for him to allow his only begotten son to die on the cross for the wicked. Jesus taking on the sins of the whole world, the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, our sins, your sins, the sins of all of the Sunshine Coast of Australia, the sins of the whole world. You know, it makes you appreciate the sacrifice of Christ when you understand how much God hates sin, you know, how much God hates wickedness. 
Verse number 32. Now, this is a very unusual story. Um, and I, I guess when you understand that Lot has been in Sodom and his, sis, and his daughters have grown up in that city and how wicked the place is, I guess this seems okay to them, all right? But it's, it's a very wicked act that takes place in the Bible, you know, the sin of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Incest, yeah, incest, okay? Verse number 32. And basically this story just also highlights the dangers of alcohol. Okay, the dangers of alcohol. Verse number 32, what do the daughters say? Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him that we may uh, preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. When it says there that Lot perceived not, he was at a, in a drunken stupor. Like he, he, didn't, he, he, he was so drunk, that he doesn't even know what's going on, all right? We'll soon see where they learnt this, okay? We'll soon see where they learnt this. Uh, Verse number 34, And it came to pass on the morrow that the first one said unto the younger, younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father, let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not. So once again, he doesn't know what's going on. He's so drunk. When she lay down, or when she, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son, and called his name Moab. That's where the Moabites, oh, it says here. The same is the father of the Moabites until this day. You read about them in the Bible. And the younger, she also bare a son, and called his name uh, ben, ben, ben Ami, ben Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. The Ammonites are also in the Bible. Now, I would just want you to, we're done with the book of Genesis right now. Just go to one more passage. Go to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15, please. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15. Such a, such a sad story, okay? Such a, such, a, such a bad place to be for Lot. Um, I mean, this guy really messed up his life. But doesn't that show you that, look, salvation is not by works. <laughs> salvation is not by repenting of sins. Okay? L- Lot was saved, right? He messed up his life. He messed up his family. He lived in the wrong places. Yet he was saved. Okay? Yet he was able to place his faith on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Or as, as far as what he knew, he had placed his faith on the God of Abraham. And... Uh, where did these women, where did his daughters learn this practice, you reckon? Okay. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 15 says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. Listen to me. I don't know if some of you guys might have a secret stash of alcohol in your house, secretly sipping it once in a while. I hope not. Okay. Because drunkards are meant to be kicked out of the church. But listen, if you put a drink to your neighbor, you offer a drink to someone in this church, you are being extremely wicked. In fact, you're learning from the Sodomites. All right? And it's going to get you kicked out of this church. Let me tell you right now. All right? It's going to get you kicked out of this church. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him. Look, to him, right? To him. And maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look upon, sorry, look on their nakedness. All right, listen to me. This is where this is what the homos- this is what the homosexuals do. They'll get you drunk. They'll, they'll they'll try to find some young man, offer them alcohol, show them pornography, give them drugs, whatever it is to make their mind melt. All right, to make them stupid, to make them drunk, to make them drugged out of their minds, and then they'll take advantage of that person. That's what the sodomites do. Okay, that's what happens. All right? I have no doubt that these daughters learnt the practice in Sodom. What was going on in Sodom? They said, hey, how do we trick our father? Let's get him drunk. Let's get him stupid, drunk. We'll lie with him. We'll have children this way. What, what wicked practice, okay? And look, I don't know. Were these girls saved? We, we don't really know, okay? I, I, hope, I hope so, all right? I mean, they, 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 they've messed up. They've done some, some wicked acts. But see, guys... We can try our best to create a Christian home, teach our children what's right, 
You've got to be careful about the other influences that they can have in their lives, the friends that they make, okay? Adults that they look up to, uncles, you know, grandparents. You know, you put them into a, a social activity. Be careful. I would, look, I'm not against those, you know, put them in social activities, but it'd be best parents if you were there to supervise, to make sure your children are protected, okay? These daughters, they were, they were virgins, okay? You know, they, they, or they kept them pure to some extent, but they had learned the practice of Sodom. They were influenced by the homosexuals, all right? Now, let me finish on this, because what, what happens when you preach a sermon like this and you just show the wickedness of sin? There are some people that have been abused as children, all right? Maybe homosexual acts have been performed on them, Okay? And look, we're living in a generation where the schools, the teachers are telling our kids, you should try it. Do you really, boys, do you really like girls? Girls, do you really like boys? How do you know? Maybe you've got to experiment. And we're living in a generation of people that have been told this sin is normal. You need to try it, see if you like it. And some people might do stupid acts, okay? Might do acts of homosexuality, not because it's, they give it into their lust. It's because they're doing some stupid experiment. They've been deceived. They just, tr- they just tried something. That they've, been, you know, they've been influenced by this wicked world. All right? And they commit this act. And then they'll say, well, am I reprobate? You know, have, I've been taken advantage of. I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. Listen, let me make something very clear. Very clear. These reprobates, these reprobates that we saw in Romans chapter 1, they are haters of God. God has given up on them, given them a reprobate mind. They cannot even, even if they wanted to, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They can't even do that. They know they are done for. They know that, it, that they're going to be taken and destroyed. Let me just say, if there's anyone here that has done some stupid activity like this, maybe in a drunken stupor, stupor okay? Maybe, maybe some stupid act like this, and you're one man, am I reprobate? Well, it's very simple. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you able to do that? Do you know that you're eternally secure, that your sins have been paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross? And if you say to me with all sincerity and honesty, yes, I know that for sure, I have believed on Christ, then Christ paid for your sins on the cross as well. Okay? You're forgiven for those stupid acts that you committed. They were stupid acts, okay? uh, but they've been paid for, and you're eternally secure in Christ. Okay? You're not someone of a reprobate mind. When we look at what we see here in Sodom, in the tribe of Benjamin, in Romans chapter 1, we're seeing, obviously, the out and proud homosexuals, okay, that are preying on the innocent. These people are done for. Please do not make friends of these people. They, they are to be taken and to be destroyed, to be put to death by our government. Let's pray.